this ground on which we stand and we're viewing today, it's 113 acres and it's been in production since 1900. Only more recently has it been not used in production and it has been a mining park, the Tonopah Historic Mining Park. We want the park to be an exciting adventure and to share with our visitors the history of mining in this part of Nevada. It was reported to me by the staff here at the mining park. This apparently was a mine shaft. It was an air shaft for some of the workings here at the old Mizpah silver mine. Once the mining ceased in the area, the shaft may have remained open for a number of years, but was eventually backfilled 20 some years ago to add additional space for the parking lot for the visitor center. And owing to snow and Rain, rainy conditions in the area, the backfill materials settled and the shaft opened up once again. And this shaft actually opened up under a vehicle that was parked here. So that was a very unusual circumstance. Just the fact that it's so close to town and in such a busy area, it was very, very important that we get it permanently closed as quickly as possible. Typically we're working on mine sites that are quite a ways farther from town, and this one being right in the corner of a museum parking lot is, is certainly different to say the least. We actually have a ranking system where we rate each individual mine shaft or tunnel based on its location plus the hazard type and apply a hazard ranking of a minimal of two points to a maximum high ranking of ten points. And each one of the features that we find is given a ranking. This ranks a nine out of ten points mostly for location. There could have been someone's car visiting the, the mining museum parked at that site, and they could have been in it leaving when it, when it opened. We have a blockage or a partial blockage about nine feet down, but when you throw a rock down below that, it travels considerably further. 40 to 50 feet was my estimate. If it's 25 feet, very likely you're seriously injured or even dead because as you fall, you're bouncing off the walls and sustaining damage on the way down. So what we, we aim to do is, is close it permanently. We're gonna be going down inside the hazard to build a bulkhead um, to support the expanding foam that we'll be filling the site with. We are going to uh, fill it up to the surface uh, from a depth of about nine feet using polyurethane expansive foam. Uh, our crew is currently building a platform at the bottom of the hole that will contain the foam. The bulkhead will consist of metal lath that will support the foam. Um, it's the same stuff that you've seen used in concrete construction when they spray gunite or do stucco on a house. Um, that will be placed in the hole to cover the existing opening. It will be fastened to two by fours. And then there's a calculation based on the diameter of the hole for the depth that you go. So you want to make sure you fill it to the desired depth, which today we have eight feet for this hole, which we're going to fill it to a depth of, of eight feet. This hole, with the dimensions that it is, will be eight cubic yards of, of expanding foam. We will pour in uh, bags of polyurethane expansive foam. It expands in the shaft, getting into all the nooks and crannies, all of the sidewall areas, creating a very tough and very permanent seal. We have been asked to actually leave the foam exposed so that people can see it on the surface. 